While many of the volcanoes within the United States are well known, their counterparts in Canada are not. And this is despite the fact that Canada has been the site of more than three dozen volcanic eruptions in the last 10,000 years, the last of which occurred in 1904 as a lava flow from the little-known Iskut Unic River Cones volcano flowed a total of 20 kilometers, eventually going across the international border and into Alaska. Another volcano which is closer to a population center, the well-preserved Coastal Cone erupted around 1600, while a deadly volcanic eruption occurred from the CX Cone around 1700, resulting in the deaths of several thousand indigenous peoples. In total, Canada has 19 volcanoes which could probably be classified as active, having produced an eruption at some point since the end of the last ice age, in addition to a 20th volcano which might appear extinct but still produces active mud volcanoes, a 21st volcano with recent seismicity, and a 22nd volcano with no known Holocene eruptions but with a number of vents presumably under 50,000 years old. Thus, in the style of the U.S. Geological Survey's National Volcanic Threat Assessment linked in this video's description, I have created the equivalent for the 22 volcanic complexes in Canada. Used to calculate this threat rating score are a series of factors for each volcano which include things such as, by the way, this list is not all inclusive, there are more factors than what I am about to mention, the frequency and size of volcanic eruptions, whether eruptions are dominantly effusive or explosive, amount of nearby infrastructure, amount of nearby air traffic, and the amount of nearby population. And I want to note that volcanoes anywhere on this scale can be potentially dangerous or deadly given a certain set of circumstances, such as a volcanic eruption. Before I reveal the full list, I would like to thank the sponsor of this extended duration geology video, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, aka a virtual private network. A VPN keeps you safe by covering up everything you do online while also allowing you to bypass government internet censorship. Did a major earthquake or volcanic eruption in your country just occur, causing corruption to be revealed which the government did not like, with that same government trying to stop the spread of this information via blocking one or more social media sites? Surfshark VPN has you covered. Simply log on to a Surfshark account and change your IP address to a country where those same websites are not blocked and there you go, easy access to a blocked site. Since your data is encrypted with Surfshark, while traveling you can access your bank safely even while on public Wi-Fi. Normally, connecting to such a sensitive website on public Wi-Fi risks the chance of hackers stealing your login info. But not with Surfshark. Just be sure to check if your bank allows usage of their website when connected to a VPN beforehand. Viewers who get Surfshark VPN with the link shown on screen who enter the promo code GEOLOGYHUB will get 83% off their purchase and 3 extra months for free. Now, as promised, here is the Canadian Volcano Hazard Assessment list in full, with a similar threat score volcano within the United States shown on the right side for comparison. I want to note that I am not affiliated with the United States or Canadian governments or their geological surveys, this is simply my personal opinion-based interpretation of various volcanoes in Canada using a specific U.S. Geological Survey methodology. I will now briefly explain each of these volcanic complexes. Starting from the bottom of this list are two volcanoes which are highly remote in British Columbia, not located near any major airports, and only have a minimal population within 30 kilometers of them. Both coming in with a threat score of zero are the Dark Mountain Volcanic Field and Castle Rock. Both complexes are composed of subglacial vents known as toyas and subglacial mounds which have a generally dark coloration. However, it is quite likely that the Dark Mountain Complex has not erupted in more than 20,000 years, and the same is probably true of Castle Rock, except it has produced occasional seismic activity, suggesting that it might have some form of deep magma reservoir. The last very low threat volcano is the Toya Volcanic Field, which last erupted around 10,000 years ago, producing the Gabriel's Cone and a medium length lava flow. The only nearby city to this complex is Jade City, which, as the name implies, is the site of jade mining. Moving into the low threat category, we have the Alligator Lake Complex, 40 kilometers southwest of the city of Whitehorse and Yukon, which consists of two post-glacial cinder cones. On the southwestern section of Swindle Island is the most recent volcanic vent of the Millbake Sound Complex, a volcanic field that covers an area of 500 square kilometers across several islands in western British Columbia. The Bridge River Cones probably last erupted at some point in the last 5,000 years, but not much is known about them. The second most active volcano in Canada, which last erupted in 1904, is the Iskut Unic River Cones, which has erupted approximately a dozen times since the end of the last ice age. Luckily, only a single dam is located near this remote volcano. 
The highest threat Yukon Volcano is the Fort Selkirk Volcanic Field, which only produced a single volcanic eruption north of the city of Fort Selkirk approximately 7,500 years ago. The Hoodoo Mountain Toya, which is still glacier-covered, comes in next on this list, while three volcanic cones east and northeast of the city of Atlin come in next. The CX Cone, which has erupted twice in the last 1,000 years and produced a deadly eruption which killed thousands in the 18th century, comes in only in the upper end of the low threat category because, in comparison to many volcanoes higher on this list, it is not as explosive. The remote level mountain volcano may have erupted around 12,000 years ago, possibly producing the Finlay Tephras, and today still has active mud volcanoes present, suggesting a possible at-death magmatic source. This might seem a bit surprising to call this volcano potentially active due to its substantial level of erosion, but some evidence does point this way. The mantle hotspot caused Nazco volcano produced its most recent of three eruptions 7,000 years ago and is not close to any major cities but is close to some logging operations. This volcano was near the site of a possible very deep magmatic intrusion which did not travel very far into the crust during 2007, and today has several volcanic gas seeps which release carbon dioxide gas. The first purely explosive volcano on this list is the remote Crow Lagoon complex which consists of at least two explosion craters termed Mars which are each up to a kilometer across and 200 meters deep. In the lower end of the moderate threat category is the Wells Gray Clearwater Volcanic Field. It has erupted four times in the last 10,000 years, including an eruption in 1600, which were generally moderately explosive, but has also produced explosive Mars and has been the site of recent earthquakes. The Spectrum Range Volcano contains an abundance of beautiful hydrothermally altered rock and has been the site of moderately explosive basaltic and highly explosive rhyolitic eruptions. It has erupted twice in the last 10,000 years, and the reason it is ranked so highly despite no major nearby population centers is its proximity to the Juno International Airport. Next on this list, the Silver Throne Caldera at one point, probably between 200,000 and 2 million years ago, produced a powerful VEI-7 explosive eruption, which was more than 100 times more voluminous than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. This eruption formed a 30-kilometer long and 19-kilometer wide caldera which is now covered by many glaciers. Silver Throne has only produced one eruption, which was a small, probably VEI-2 cinder cone forming eruption in the last 10,000 years. The most active volcano on this list with possibly as many as 30 eruptions in the last 11,650 years and the first high threat volcano is Mount Ziza. It has a large 2.8 kilometer wide caldera, has produced numerous recent cinder cones such as the Eve Cone, many additional lava flows, and as a stratovolcano has produced many explosive eruptions. Yet, it is not higher up on this list due to the lack of any significant population centers nearby. Although the Mount Cayley stratovolcano has probably only erupted once since the end of the last ice age, the fact that its eruptions are almost always highly explosive and that many of its flanks travel into valleys which lead to several towns make this a high threat volcano. Next we have the high threat Garibaldi Lake Volcanic Field and the very high threat Mount Garibaldi Volcano. Altogether, they have produced four volcanic eruptions in the last 15,000 years, one of which formed a toya, and the other three of which were highly explosive, resulting in unusually long dacite lava flows, which, if they were to happen again, could cause a high degree of destruction to the more than 10,000 people who live in the region. The highest threat volcano in Canada is Mount Meagre, which could sort of be thought of as Canada's Mount St. Helens. Approximately 2400 years ago, it produced a Mount St. Helens-like highly explosive Plinian volcanic eruption on the same order of magnitude as the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, registering in as a VEI-5 and ejecting one cubic kilometer of tephra. It deposited in some locations more than a half meter thick of ash, created voluminous pyroclastic flows, while also creating long-reaching destructive lahars. Today, Meager has numerous hot springs and active fumaroles that proves it still has an at-depth magma chamber while also producing more recent earthquake swarms than any volcano on this list in Canada. Thanks for watching, and another thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.